Good day everyone and welcome to our English class. Today, we will be discussing a very interesting topic. But before that, allow me to ask you this question. What hinders you in showing your true feelings? As we grow older, we tend not to be transparent in how we feel. We always try to keep everything in ourselves, even deep inside, we are bursting already. Maybe we're afraid of some validation and judgments. Perhaps this goes with our way of communicating to others. Public speaking becomes harder when we are about to integrate our emotion and try to add variations in it. So today, we are going to talk about something that is connected to speaking and expressing one's self. We are going to talk about pitch, stress, juncture, and intonation. First in the list is pitch, wherein it is defined as the relative highness or lowness of a tone as perceived by the ear, which depends on the number of vibrations per second produced by the vocal cords. It is also the main acoustic correlate of tone and intonation. Now, say these statements by adding extra force to the underlined words. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. I love you. Now we can conclude that it's not about what you say, but how you say it. Consciously or unconsciously, the speaker will use the different patterns of pitch to convey the different meanings to the listener. Consider the uses of pitch change and the associated meanings in the different categories as follows. First one is informational. Example, I saw a man in the garden that answers, whom did you see or what happened? Next one would be, I saw a man in the garden. That answers, did you see a man in the garden? After informational is grammatical. For example, a rising pitch turns a statement into a yes, no question as in, he's going home. After grammatical is elocution. The intentional meaning is signaled by the pitch pattern. For example, why don't you move to California? Question versus why don't you move to California? Suggestion. After that is attitudinal. High declining pitch signals more excitement than does low declining pitch as in good morning versus good morning. After attitudinal is textual, information not in the sentence is signaled by the absence of a statement ending decline in pitch as in the lecture was cancelled. High pitch on both syllables of cancelled indicating continuation. The lecture was cancelled. High pitch on first syllable of cancelled, but declining pitch on the second syllable indicating the end of the first thought. Done with the pitch, now let's talk about stress. It is the relative emphasis that may be given to certain syllables in a word or to certain words in a phrase or a sentence. In English, stressed syllables are louder than non-stressed syllables. Also, they are longer and have a higher pitch. So why is word stress is important? Word stress is not just used in all languages. Some languages, such as Japanese or French, for example, pronounce each syllable with equal emphasis. Other languages, English, for example, use word sentence or word stress. Word stress is not an optional extra that you can add to the English language if you want. It is part of the language. English speakers use word stress to communicate rapidly and accurately, even in difficult conditions. If, for example, you do not hear a word clearly, you can still understand the word because of the position of the stress. Good example will be the word object. If it is a noun, it is something that you can see and touch that is uh, not alive, like object. The stress is on the first syllable. While if it is a verb, 
This means to oppose or disagree with something. This is pronounced as object. For example, my mother objected when I brought home a stray cat. All right, so what is stress all about? So here are four general rules to keep in mind about word stress as you practice pronunciation. The first one is stress the first syllable of the most two syllable nouns. For example, climate, and then the knowledge. The capitalized um, syllables or the uppercase syllables is where we um, could give Okay, or we could, or we are going to apply the stress in that certain word. Next example will be um, two syllable adjectives. That's why we have sleep can't and also spacious. The next rule will be stress the last syllable of most two syllable verbs. For example, require, or it could be decide. And we also need to stress the second to the last syllable of the words that ends, or words that ends in ik, or the ic, so that we have ecstatic, and also geographic. And also words ending in shon, or shon, we have extension, and also Retribution. After that would be the stress to the third from the last syllable of these words. Words that end in C, T, P, and G. Example, democracy, uncertainty, geography, radiology. And also we have the words that end in AL. Examples are exceptional, critical. After stress, now let's talk about juncture. Juncture refers to breaks or pauses in speech that indicate words or other grammatical units. It is another measure of intonation. It characterizes the passage from one sound to the next sound in the stream of speech. Basically, juncture interposes a temporary stoppage of the flow of speech. It suggests the need or propriety of pausing to obtain clarity in thought relation. Again, juncture is all about pauses in a certain speech. That might be a short pause, a long pause, or a terminal pause. Lastly, we will be talking about intonation. It is the rising and falling pitch in one's voice. It is primarily a matter of a variation in the pitch level of the voice. But in English, as a language, stress and rhythm are also involved in intonation. And one more thing about this is it conveys differences of expressive meaning. For example, being surprised, being anger, or it could be wariness or delightfulness. Just like with this example, using the rising tone. Did you understand that? Or it could be something which is being delivered in a falling tone or in a calm tone. Have, I hope you understand everything. That will be all for today and thank you so much for listening. I hope that you have learned new concepts and acquired new skills that you may use in your daily lives. Always remember that there is fun in learning.